It's a high-tech, behind-the-scenes world we're living in nowadays, and with the potential of our editing boxes, it's a crime to see titles that look like they were made with press type on cardstock in front of the camera. Not that there's anything wrong with that. With some simple masks and mats, the mystery of intriguing titles can be boiled down to a few simple elements. This week, we're investigating the basics of compositing. We're cutting class. I love simple titles, but sometimes the productions are going to call for the big, glossy, flashy, and showy network style opens that are only going to be achieved through compositing. So this week, why don't we take a couple clips, some elements, some pieces, and some parts, and we can stack them on top of each other and make our own custom composited open. What better way to start off in our classroom than with a dissection of a sample of the video we're going to make? Here's our show open for the ever popular crime lab drama complete with showy graphics showing the characters doing what they do best. Now, obviously this wasn't put together all at once in front of the camera. There are foreground elements, background elements, text in varying forms, and even some textured elements. Our background is going to be made from two jump backs and a slats and bars element from the Digital Juice Motion Design Elements Library. I'm going to place jump back 1440 from Jumpbacks Volume 38 Law and Order on my bottom layer in the timeline. On my second layer, I'm going to place Motion Slats and Bars number 7. And don't worry about the color or the visible portions of this element because we're going to be using its alpha channel to set up a track mat which we're going to use to create the composite of our background. For more info, why don't we check out this? Don't adjust your sets. You're dialed into the alpha channel. That's right. Alpha Channel, the programming content that you never knew was there. It looks more like the Invisible Channel to me. That's right, it is the Invisible Channel. The Alpha Channel is an extra color channel in your video signal that holds the information in the image, allowing for variable transparency. If you could see an Alpha Channel, it would be in black and white. For even more information on Alpha Channels, check out Techno episode 106 in the DJTV archives. On my third layer, I'm going to be placing jump back 1429, again from volume 38. Here's where our composite begins. I'm going to select the blend mode for this element to be track mat alpha. What this does is apply the alpha channel information, the transparency information, from our slats and bars element on the layer below to the jump back. Notice how some parts of the jump back are completely gone, while other parts have partial transparency and you can kind of see through them. I want to apply some color correction to this entire background at a global level, meaning I want the entire background corrected as one piece, not as individual elements. The simplest way to do this is to select all of the elements in my timeline and nest them all into one item. Now I can apply one effect to this item and it's consistent across my composited background. I'm going to command click or right click on this new item in my timeline and select open in viewer. From there, I'm just going to grab the three-way color corrector from my effects bin and drag it onto my nested comp. Now I can tweak the colors to where I want them. Let's look at the foreground elements. Not the text, but the main character in all his forensic glory. We want to remove some of the image here so we can place him over the background resulting in a composite that shows our brave lawman on top of our background. Our hero wasn't shot to pull a chroma key, and it's not necessary for us to do a full rotoscope on him, so we're just going to add a simple mask and use that to composite him over the top of our background. I'm going to place this clip on my timeline several tracks above what will be my base tracks. This gives me room to place things between my background and foreground elements. I'm going to select my clip and apply a mask. Mask add transparency to a clip by adding information to the clip's alpha channel. And masks that you apply as filters often give you some basic control such as the shape, position, and edge feather of the mask. All I want here is for my foreground image to be transparent on one side of the screen and gradually fade into my crime lab detective here. I'm going to use the filter mask shape and I'm going to choose a rectangle. We'll position the mask by clicking on the crosshairs that are next to the mask center property, and click to the right of the screen for this clip. 
This is because I only want to show what's on the right portion of this clip. Let's adjust the vertical scale of the mask to 200. We only want to take out a side of our clip. In the portion we keep, we want to show everything vertically without feathering the top or bottom edges. More on this in a moment. Next, I'm going to adjust my horizontal scale, adjusting it so we see a good portion of our background. Right now, we have a hard edge. And remember, we want the transparency to gradually change. With our clip selected, let's go back to the effects menu and apply a mask feather filter. This allows us to feather the edge of any mask applied to the clip. I'm going to drag the slider over to give our mask a big soft edge. Because our mask is centered to the right of the image and vertically scaled to twice the size of the image, we only see the soft edge on the one border where we want it. I'm going to add a mask to each foreground element as I cut them in. Alright, after we've applied mask to uh, our clips here, we're just going to drop them in the timeline and we're going to overlap them a little bit, allowing them to fade in and fade out, maybe even move them a little bit with some keyframes. Alright, we're going to work on some other elements. Our initial show open had some faded text running through the background underneath our foreground elements. We're going to simply make some scrolling text using our text editor, making it real big. And we want to make it rather transparent, about 25%. We'll also set its blending mode to screen so it kind of lights up where it rolls. Our main title text we're going to treat as an element here. Typography in creating titles is a whole other subject. What we have here is some text that was created for us in After Effects. It may look all fancy, but that's just a text animation preset. I'm wanting to demonstrate here that you don't have to be an animating typography wizard to make some showy text. If you're new to motion graphics programs like Adobe After Effects and Apple's Motion, the presets are a good place to start. You can use them to see how something's created. Use what you learned from those examples to make your own. Alright, we're just going to drop these text elements in where they're appropriate. The great thing is that they were rendered out with an embedded alpha channel, so they composite into our sequence with the greatest of ease. Alright, let's take a look. Okay, maybe this will call for a spin-off like Crime Lab Detectives Dayton. I think we're going to need some more donuts though. One thing to remember is that we made this clip by just using some simple masks. The reality is that most visual effects are accomplished just by creating and combining different mats and masks. So when you're making your own composites, don't be afraid to dissect and replicate what you see out there because it's a fun way to learn and you might find there's some new things that you can try. So have fun with it and we'll see you next time.